on all but the first of Marco Polo's water girds. For tomorrow, the caravan sets out to cross the Gobi Desert. Now you will follow us, and on the third night, I will walk back to you. Then we're going to ride back here to Lop, wait for two days, and then return to the caravan to collect the thing of magic that will bring the mighty Kubla Khan to his knees. taken charge of the traveler's unusual caravan and set out into the Gobi Desert. The journey across this vast ocean of sand is slow and hazardous. To make matters worse, the old doctor continually shows his disapproval of my action by being both difficult and bad-tempered. For three days now, during which time we have covered no more than 30 miles, I have had to endure his insults. use crossing the Gobi Desert, Marco. We will use one barrel every five days, Ian. I have allowed for eight goods to carry us across to the other side. The bones of many men who thought they had enough lie bleached in the desert sand. More. I think we should exercise some restraint, Tigana. I'm sorry the doctor wouldn't eat with us this evening. Yes, so my missing, Marco. I'll take his food. A game of chess, Ian. Oh, well, I'm not very good, but I'll give you a game. I gladly accept your challenge. What magnificent pieces. Yes, I purchased them in Home Woods on my first journey to Cathay. Now they go with me everywhere. Do you, uh... I'm let... sorry, Marco. Do you play chess, lady? Not very well, Tagana. Excuse me. I find it a fascinating game of strategy of war. Two equally balanced armies deployed upon a field of battle, and each commander determined to be the one who cries, Shamat. Shamat? Checkmate? It means the king is dead. <laughs> We'll get the TARDIS back, Susan. Yes, at Kublai Khan's court, when it's too late. We should be up there, another time, another galaxy. Oh, we'll think of something. How? Ian playing chess with Marco? Grandfather being rude and, and sulking by himself? Oh, I don't think he's sulking, is he? Well, he won't eat. He won't even talk to me. Well, you know him better than I do. But I'd have said he was just feeling defenseless. He has a wonderful machine capable of all sorts of miracles. It's taken away from him by a man he calls a primitive. Look, TARDIS is the only home we have at the moment. And when we're in it, we feel safe and secure. But when we're out of it... He talked to me. Confide in me. Oh, he's like a rubber ball. You come bouncing out of there soon, full of ideas. One day, we'll know all the mysteries of the skies. And we'll stop our wondering. Then you and I will say goodbye. Hmm? Oh, not yet. Not for a long time. Well, I think we should say goodnight anyway. Are you coming? No, not for the moment. Good night. Thank you. Shh. She's gone to bed. Oh. Well, I'll go to them. 
Good night. Good night, Susan. Sleep well. Now, what was I about to do? Ah, yes. Ouch. Not asleep yet? No, I was thinking. What about how peaceful it is in the desert? Lovely night. The moon will rise later. That is the time to see the desert. It is like a great silver sea. Metal seas of Venus. Where? Oh, a long way from here. I've never seen a moon at night. How long before the moon rises? Two or three hours. I'll call you then. Night in the desert is very beautiful. Don't be deceived by it, Miss Wright. The desert is always dangerous. Like my queen. Check. Marco, can you save your king? I think so, Jagana. Check. Horses are very restless. There's a sandstorm coming in. How do you know? You notice how still it is? As if everything were waiting? They sense it too. Will it be a bad one? Bad enough. I must attend to the horses. when we left the caravan. Oh, come on, let's go back. All right. Susan, <coughs> listen. It's coming this way! Hey, Pinky! 
Yeah, we must get back before it reaches us. No, the caravan is too far away. Now, come on. We must get back. We can't stay here. No, we'll get caught in it and we'll never find our way. Pinchot, come on. Yeah, we must just stay here. No. You must wait till it's light. Can't just go on sitting here. Shh. Doctor's still asleep. You don't want him to know about the girls. Barbara, I give you my word that until we find the girls, we will not leave this place. You've had us half worried to death. Where have you been? We went for a walk. A walk? You're not asking me, don't you dare do that again, do you understand? That also applies to you, Ping Cho. I'm sorry, Mr. Marco. Has, has Grandfather been very worried? Luckily for you, he's been asleep the whole time. And we don't want him to know anything about this. I'm surprised that you'd encourage such a venture, Tagana. Oh, they weren't with me. I found them, crouched behind a sand dune. You were alone? Yeah, well, it was a pleasant night. I decided for a walk. I told the guard he knew all about it. In future, the guards will be told to notify me immediately if any of you wish to leave the camp. Now go and change. We have to break camp soon. This has been a terrible experience for us all, Marco. Couldn't we spend one more night here? I'm oh, sorry, Miss Wright. Well, surely one day can't make all that much difference. One day without progress is one day's water wasted. And in the Gobi Desert, that could mean the difference between life and death.
progress today has been good, although we were all very tired after a sleepless night. How can I ever repay Tagana for saving Ping Cho and Susan? We covered 15 miles before I gave the order to set up camp for the night. Susan? <coughs> Susan! Oh, I never get the sand out of my hair. Last night there were moments when I was sure I would never be here again. Pincho, did you believe Tagana last night? When you told Mr. Marco about going for a walk? Why not? Well, I don't think Tagana's the kind of man who goes for a walk just because it's a nice night. I think he goes because he has a reason to go. Susan, why would he lie to Mr. Marco? I don't know. He's an important man, the special emissary of a great Mongol leader who has been at war with Kublai Khan. Tagana's to arrange a peaceful settlement between them. Would a man like that lie about walking in the desert? No. No, he wouldn't. That's what's so strange. What? The fact that he did. What is that you do? I keep a journal. Why? Because it interests me. Excellent. Excellent. Well, it's better a man keeps the blade of his sword clean and his edge sharp. You continue your writing, Marco. I'll see to the horses tonight. I'll, uh, I'll give the guard his instructions. No. Send him to me. Please. The marker? Yes, except for the one we're using. How much is there left? Without rationing, enough for today. And with rationing, how long will it last? Three, four days. Is it enough to get us back to Lop? If we're very careful with it, yes. But who could have done it? Bandits, Ian. Bandits? In the desert? Yes, this has happened before, though not to me. The bandits follow a caravan out into the desert. Then one night this happens. The caravan is forced to turn back. Then when everyone is weak through lack of water, the bandits attack. So if we turn back, we're bound to be attacked. Yes. Then we shall fight. There must be somewhere else we can go to. The nearest is a small oasis, but that's one week's journey north from here. Marco, if we pressed really hard, walk day and night, how long would it take us? Five, possibly six days. As long as that? Yes. And with the water rationed, we'd be growing weaker all the time. There is another danger, Ian. Bandits always camp near an oasis. Well, then we must go back to Lop. But they're bound to be waiting for us there. Now, we must go north and take a chance. Yes, what Ian says makes sense. We go to the oasis. We shall all die of thirst. I will not go. Then what will you do? Return to Lop. I'm not afraid of any bandits that give me my share No, water. Tagana. You refuse the warlord, Tagana? I am commander of this caravan, and I am responsible to Kublai Khan for your safety. We go north together. Have I made the right decision? 
Each day our progress towards the oasis becomes less. On the first day we covered 20 miles. On the second, 15. The third, 10. On the fourth day's total was 8. Now on the fifth day we have traveled only 2 miles before the heat of the sun has forced us to stop. We are nearly exhausted and our situation is perilous. The worst of the sun is nearly over. We must move on again as soon as we've had this. The bearers had their ration. You take it. Move share. Is this all we're going to get until tonight? Mm. Until we reach the oasis, Doctor, mm. yes. There's no more? How much further? I cannot say. I will go to the oasis and bring back water. Do you think you can reach the oasis? Very well, Mr. Gunn. Who, uh, wait for me here? No. No, while we can, we'll push on towards the oasis. Exhausted. We'll fix up a cot for him in the wagon. To be jostled and bumped about? He needs to rest in comfort, Marco. What about the TARDIS? He'd be more comfortable, Marco. Please, Mr. Marco. Very well. The doctor can travel in his own caravan. Susan, you can go with him. But you, Barbara, and you, Ian, must remain with me. Thank you. Marco. Without water, the doctor isn't going to last 24 hours. None of us are, Ian. Without water. Our fate rests with Tagana. Here's water, Marco Polo. Come for it. 